Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian from Whisper Status 74 and this is going to be a bit of a beat a dead horse video. This will be on OLED exclusively OLED. Plus, minuses, pros, cons, strengths, why I want one, why I don't want one. And hopefully you'll be able to relate to my specific usage and see where your usage or tastes lie. Um, before I start the video, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that sent amazing comments on both Instagram and YouTube about the uh, passing of my grandfather. You really made my day and made things much easier for me. And my family was very impressed with many of your comments. So thank you so much. OLED is a hot topic. It is a, uh, a technology much like plasma versus LCD, which has garnished a lot of admiration and even more hate. There is no middle ground. There isn't many people that think it's okay. They either think it's amazing and everyone else should be quiet, or people that hate it and everyone else should be quiet. There's been very little um, middle ground on people's thoughts on it. You can see it in the comments. You can see it in the toxicity in certain comments. You can see that people defend their OLEDs and you see people defending their LEDs. And to me, guys, I don't really see the point in defending unless we're challenging it. So if this video was titled LED versus OLED, that makes perfect sense. But this one's gonna be specifically on OLED for those of you that are looking to purchase one and you're on the fence because like plasma, what's always gonna be in the background is image retention and burn-in and the limitations of the technology. And the elitism that comes with plasma and OLED which puts it out of reach. And it gets a little bit weird now as they're becoming more affordable. Those of you that are in the UK, they are more affordable than LCDs. So I'm kind of speaking to people in the US here about the price aspect of it. I'm not sure how it is in the rest of the world. Please let me know whatever regions you guys are in, what the pricing is. Are they more expensive? Or are they cheaper? Um, so OLED, like plasma, was this untouchable technology. You know, praised from when it came out, perhaps too much overrated who knows they were very very limited initially like plasma burn-in was very very quick it would happen especially since there was very little knowledge on how to negate it or to avoid it in any which way like i said in the video the other day there should be an owner's manual there should be a, a this is how you handle an oled checklist that they should send you home with them to prove my point, when you walk into a Best Buy, I want you to pretend like you know nothing about displays, and I want you to ask about OLEDs and tell me what they say to you. Say, hey, is this a good value? I'm looking for a display. Their concept or their thought process is to sell you the most expensive brand, obviously. Um, they're going to push you away from the Vizios, the TCLs, and the Hisense, and you don't blame them. But OLED will always be right there. It is gorgeous. Let's not you know, say that it isn't the minimalist design the thin um design of it is what makes people really think wow i'd love to have it in my house i mean you think about where your design is in your home it would fit in any house the highest end it would just look beautiful where they are ask them what they think about them and see if burn-in comes up if they were smart they would say these are amazing there is a chance of this but i can easily explain to you or maybe perhaps even tight up or type out um, a menu or a way to avoid it and you would enjoy it perfectly. Instead what they do is they tell you this is what it costs, they send you right out and then they're done. It's not that client relationship that many smaller stores have or stores in the past would have. The idea would be to continue the relationship with the buyer. If I sell you a car, my idea is to have you buy from me with your next car or your family's car. Full disclosure, people in my family have OLEDs. I have I've got the B6, my parents, I have my friend um, Jeremy has the A9, um, the 8, F8, um, Steve has the A1E, there's a couple others, uh, my brother-in-law, now their usages are all different, and I've recommended them to some and not to others, and have taught them, or talked to them about caring for them. Maintenance, yes they are maintenance, it does require maintenance, there is something to be careful about them. If that maintenance is too much for you, then simply say, I don't want a TV that I have to babysit or maintain. The analogy has been to higher end cars. Some of you guys don't like that analogy, some of you guys do like it. Where I like that analogy is on my Jeep Wrangler, I can put freaking kerosene in it and it'll run. It won't, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying regular whatever 
in my wife's car, she has a Mercedes, I have to put a certain gas in it. I can't say, hey, look, I bought this car, it should run on whatever I put in it. It can't do the things the Jeep can. I can't beat on higher end vehicles the way I'll be able to beat on my car. If you have a Lamborghini, you have these higher end cars, these exotics, they're not daily drivers. That's what a lot of people are saying as far as that analogy. Um, some of these, you can't drive them as hard as you would drive your everyday vehicle. That's where people, I think, draw the analogy. Some of you like it, some of you can't stand it, um, but I understand why people make that analogy. Mine is, it takes a little bit more care to have a higher end vehicle than it is to have a mid-range vehicle. The Jeep, to me, is a mid-range vehicle versus the more um, high-end vehicle. So that's really where I draw that analogy. You guys can run with it, dislike it. Um, that's where I can agree with it. Babysitting them. Yes, they need to be watched. So what I mean by that is, unlike just the TVs that we have um, back in the day, the CRT tube TVs or even your LEDs, now there's channel logos on everything. I mean everything. If you're in the US, it's TNT, TBS, ESPN, AMC. They're, um, my daughter randomly walks by. They're not as transparent as they should be they should move around the screen they don't they slam it there it's there through commercials it's there through trailers on movies it's there constantly that is an issue um, also tickers there's tickers at the bottom of everything now it used to just be news channels or Nasdaq now it's every single news channel those are things that you want to be mindful of if you're somebody that watches cable TV only it might not be a great pick for you if you're somebody that falls asleep in front of your TV at night, which I had done for many years, it might not be a, a technology for you. Um, but also think to yourself, am I going to spend X amount of dollars on a very high-end display to watch CNN and Fox or whatever it is you watch? It's not really its strength for that. Its strength is in film and in movies and in streaming. And also in gaming, due to its high motion, its contrast, and its picture quality. But let's go back to TV at first. Come here. Um, it goes back in. We'll go back into that first. Is what are you going to use it for? Is the picture that it presents something you're going to like? All right. So we talked about the Z9F before versus the Z9D. The Z9F, very high peak brightness. You know, decent contrast in a bright room it would do amazing those black bars would appear black hold on so the environment is important just like plasma if you're in a room uh, a sun porch in a living room such as even my living room which was where my plasma is ironically enough it becomes an absolute mirror um, just because not because of the brightness so much but because of the windows that are directly behind it and to the side of it so would it be the best pick for that room doesn't need to be in completely dark room it can be in a bright room but just not it being the majority bright with windows directly on it it's knowing your usage as another one of my kids walks by hi so your usage where is it style of image do you like the more natural image of OLED versus LED now that has changed a little bit versus plasma because OLEDs are very vibrant now they weren't three or four years ago. Now, to me, they have just as much pop as the brightest LED. Just as much saturation, if you like um, the LG line, they have that amazing wow factor. Now, keep in mind the power of the demo. The demos for those displays are fantastic. In order for me to prove it to you, look up LG or Sony OLED demos and run them on your 1080p TV or run them on your 4K display, and you'll see how amazing your displays look and how black and dark they are. They're great to see issues with blooming, but the remember, power of the demo, the demos are beautiful. But think about the picture quality that you like. If you like bright, punch, spectral highlights, you like that, that crazy spark with TV, that crazy um, explosions, lightning that you see in movies, then you might wanna stay with an LED. If you like that super saturated, sharp image, then LED is for you. But hear that. What I mean by that is when you're listening to reviews and you're listening to people like me that are talking, say to yourself, well, you know what? I really don't like part of what he's saying. Now, I'll compare that to my own personal tastes. 
What I love about OLED is contrast ratio. That the perceived peak brightness of an OLED, so an OLED that is 750 nits can sit next to a display that is nearly 2000 nits and they can look nearly identical in a bright room without ABL, which is the auto light you know, limiter, the auto brightness limiter. Um, that perceived brightness, that contrasts, meaning that it looks brighter than it is simply because of how black the blacks are. The drawback can be black crush, which can also lose some of the detail. It does happen, some more than others. That's something to think about. Black crush can look as things are way too black, where you'll see like this and there's no detail at all, or you can see black crush be just black with some pixelation happening in it. That is black crush for those of you that aren't aware of what black crush is. That can be very distraction, distracting. You can see that you'd lose the detail in a tank top here. It would just be one black blob. Um, the Dolby Vision implementation apps on some of the Sonys, that's the issue. Everything is just so black. It's just like black hair. My hair is not black, but you would lose the detail on the image. And 4K and HD has always been about detail. So black crush is a little bit of an issue. That peak brightness, though it's perceived peak brightness, HDR being mapped to a thousand nits, doesn't mean you're not seeing HDR, okay? It doesn't mean, everyone says if your display is not a thousand nits, HDR doesn't happen. I've had this discussion with the Red Dead Redemption uh, videos, people saying, hey, if you have a display that doesn't have HDR at a thousand nits, you're not seeing HDR. That is not true. It is, it is mapped to a thousand um, HDR 10. Dolby Vision is up to 4,000. You still see it. The perceived brightness will give you that look. Is it as true as it possibly can be? No. Um, that's why when people say, why so much love for the Vizio Quantum at 3,000 nits? Well, the higher we get with that peak brightness, as you're seeing with the Z9G, the more true HDR representation you're going to get. Doesn't mean you need it, though. Dolby Vision having a 12-bit basis, when 12-bit when comes out, that'll be the next marketing thing, which will be true Dolby Vision, trust me. So we can always chase that. But when you hear other displays, like mid-range displays that only maybe hit 400 nits, that's when you'll hear, not only is the display not bright enough to meet the requirements for, Dolby, uh, for HDR, a lot of times it's the color gamut. How much does it cover? How wide is it? has more to do with HDR than just peak brightness. So you need to have both. Okay, so that's, we're gonna cover that. If you really love a super bright image, not perceived brightness, but bright, 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 searing bright, think the Sony 930E, the KS9000s, the Q90R, the Q9FN, those displays, the Vizio Quantum. If you love that searing brightness, if you love to sit back and go, wow, that's bright, the OLED is not gonna be for you. But you have to know that about yourself. You have to say to yourself, wow, I love what that guy is saying. He's saying beautiful image contrasts. If that little voice in your head says, I don't like dim, or not dim, that's the wrong word. I, I don't like that part he's saying about brightness. Listen to that voice. Don't listen to mine. When you're reading the reviews, guys, listen to them. We talked about Vincent, who I love Vincent. But get to know him know what he likes that he likes that natural image if you look at calibrations from somebody like vincent who is a professional calibrator he's going to turn off a lot of the settings that you might like if you see him doing that i don't care how talented he is and how accurate he is you're going to sit there and go i don't know if i like it <laughs> and that's what's important so those of you that are like, ah, I, I want to turn on live color, I want to turn on dynamic contrast, I want to put the TV on vivid, that is something you should be able to do. But know yourself. If you're somebody who likes to put a TV on vivid, I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm telling you something like OLED might not be for you. Now OLED with that perceived brightness, the backlight up, all those things on Macs, they are very bright, especially the newer ones. They can be very bright. I think the A9G, um, Arting's review, I think that was skewed. I think that might have been just their model. I think it's as bright as the LG. Maybe not quite as bright, but it's there. What I will say about OLEDs, though, when you do knock down the backlight, they do dim quite a bit. If you know that's not for you, then it's not for you. And just have to know that. You have to also know, um, for me, though, my concern isn't the burn-in. My concern is Black Rush being one. 
The other one is the ABL feature, which limits the brightness due to content. If it's, it, and it really only happens when the screen gets very bright, not just the spectral highlights that we talk about, where it's little 10%, 2%, 5% windows. It's primarily when the whole screen gets bright, which doesn't happen often in most content, it will dim. Depending on your unit, it might dim a lot. You can see that when you put windows up on a computer, it's all white, you'll see your image get dark. We'll definitely test that. That's uh, something I don't like that would definitely take me out of the immersion that we always talk about. Um, you guys have said in the comments you don't notice it, some notice it too much, some of you have taken back displays because of it. So keep that in mind that it is going to control your content and if you're somebody who does not want your settings controlled, you love having what you have on, then OLED is not for you. So OLED is not for you for super high peak brightness, very poppy, crazy searing sunglass images, um, your environment, bright, bright, bright rooms. Those black bars will, on a Z9F, will look black in a very, very bright room. That would be what you would need. Um, also, your taste, what you like, vibrancy. We said the LG, in my opinion, is got a more vibrant image than the Sony. I love the Sony. I have Sonys, but I'm not a fanboy. I don't just go with whatever brand I've enjoyed you know, in the, in, for the in past, I did dislike Sony for a good period of time. So LG for me, OLED, I like what the C9 has. I do like what it offers. I do like the, the color gamut, its vibrancy, how bright it is. I do like that versus the Sony. The Sony is excellent. The Sony won that shootout, but keep in mind guys, as an individual, the reasons it won that shootout, if you really break it down, don't always match what I like personally. Doesn't mean it shouldn't have won, it won. But it doesn't mean that I'm gonna say, hey, I need that because it won. I know myself, I know my tastes. That plasma experience for me was telling that way. It made me say, wait a second, you know, everybody loves this thing. Um, I went the same way with the Vizio P series when that first launched. It was amazingly reviewed, hands down, best TV of the year for the money. I didn't love the image. It was a little bland, a little dim for me. And I remember saying, like, what the hell is everybody talking about? I didn't read between the lines. I didn't really read the peak brightness and its contrast ratio. Very, very important things to know, guys. Now, burn-in versus image retention. We're going to cover this as well. Image retention is not permanent. It is image retention. It retains the image. Burn-in sounds much more acute, much more permanent, right? So permanent burn-in means it burns into the screen. The pixels get fixed on that one static image, or like you saw in the OLED burn-in videos I've done in the past, where in the demo, that very bright image hits it again, and then in a few seconds it hits it again, and it does that for 12 hours without varying content. That's why those images burned in. The burn-in you see from Netflix and YouTube and Apple TV, um, your video game consoles, they're very lined. My hands are really black. They're very lined and they, they're very static. Your video game menus, Madden, Call of Duty, Fortnite, some of them do have in the menus transparency. You can turn it down, but they're in the exact same place. Mini maps are in the exact same place. So taking a short break, going back to the same content doesn't work. Now, if you see Arting's OLED test, I suggest you guys watch those. They are over, I believe, a year, six months to a year, and it took quite a bit to get the burn-in to happen, but it did happen. Think about your habits. Think about what you want. Now, if you're somebody who says, screw that, this is what I want, I want to be able to leave my TV on all day. I want to be able to put regular gas in my wife's car, too. It will be in the shop, I will destroy it, and my attitude that I pay for it and I should do what I want with it doesn't benefit me. Mercedes is going to look at me and say, well, sorry, bro. I mean, it says here, put this gas in it. OLED has that specific usage. They should tell people that, especially elderly people that are watching news all day. I had to tell my parents in Arizona, I've done videos on them, be careful with your content, vary it. You know, um, when I first checked their, um, their OLED last time I was out there, they had image retention everywhere, and it terrified me. And I waited a few minutes. Um, I put on some regular TV. I went back, and they were gone. They faded away. On plasma, we used to call that ghosting. 
and you know pixel refresh different things to keep it moving now these pixel shifts and things that they have on OLEDs they help it from happening but not completely so if your gaming habits like we talked about are marathon you play something competitively Madden all day every day you don't switch up to a single player campaign you don't switch to movies it's not for you don't buy them and I'm not saying that you're if you made the mistake and did purchase some nobody had this information nobody they were just saying as long as you played in shorter intervals it's not really the time it's the switch in content if that same HUD is firing in that one area over and over and over again the rest of the screen is doing its thing that same HUD is constant that we don't want so just be mindful of that be mindful if you're a gamer not to leave your windows open uh, windows menu open for hours and hours and hours it's that's where it's not gonna work so the hate towards OLED for that reason it shouldn't it sh you should be yes you should be allowed to do whatever you want with them guys you should be allowed to beat the hell out of them it just doesn't work that way you can't beat the hell out of your high-end appliances you can't beat the hell out of your high-end vehicles you can't they're delicate they're pencil thin you can't grab them you can't beat on them I know because of ownership you feel that you should be able to you just can't um, instead of hating on it just say it's not for me not for me and enjoy LED they're great for games their motion is superior to LED it's not even close the color they're beautiful they're bright in a dark room these are the things that we're looking for guys pay attention to the read between the lines on reviews think about your personal choices and just be very very careful with them if you can do that then they're for you if you can't do them do that then they're not something that you should ever really consider. They're something that just doesn't fit your lifestyle, and that's okay. You don't have to make that purchase. Um, you don't have to commit to that and take on what really is a responsibility. Small kids, um, small kids that watch cartoons for hours and hours and hours, people that focus on leaving their TVs running in the other room, that's a certain group that just shouldn't look at it. It doesn't fit well with your lifestyle. Little kids that you're going to freak out on, which I did with the plasmas, it's not worth saying to your roommates, your partners, your husbands, your wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever you guys got going on, it's not worth screaming at them and saying, hey, did you leave my TV on? They're going to say, yeah, my iPad's on. My phones are on. Again, guys, it's not common sense. Taking care of these things is not common sense. Please look up the best ways to avoid the shortcomings and enjoy all of the strengths if that's too much for you guys then it's just not for you and there's no offense involved don't take offense to it don't hate the technology it's coming down in price and it's more accessible but that's where I kind of am with it and talking about it my personal experience with them my personal tastes in regards to them it fits my lifestyle perfect darkroom performance gaming and short bursts varied content movies i have zero cable tv i don't watch it at all on sports in my in my uh, little home theater downstairs it fits my needs absolutely perfect you just have to think to yourself does it fit your needs your tastes your environment your family and do you like the overall picture quality and then you can make your choice but don't listen to someone and say this person or this website says it's for me until you know it's for you make an informed choice you don't have to trash something else to make an informed decision you don't have to trash somebody that loves it somebody that loves it doesn't have to trash somebody that doesn't and just make an informed decision I am Brian from whisper status 74 thank you so much for your patience with these long videos I love all you guys and I really appreciate you listening I will talk to you soon I will see you in the comments this is my OLED video take care